Hello everyone, myself Shweta Sadav currently working as Assistant Professor in Department of Computer Engineering of KKVAG Institute of Engineering Education and Research, Nasik. Steve Jobs once said that everyone in this country should learn how to program because it teaches you how to think. If you are searching for a course which will help you to understand the basics of programming language and guide you to write the program, then the course Learn Basics of C++ Programming is the right choice. There are hundreds of programming languages in the market, but when it comes to the performance, C++ Programming is the best. Big companies like Google, Facebook, YouTube, they are being relying on this language that is C++. These are the contents that we are going to see in this course. Introduction to C++, Structure of the C++ Program, Classes and Object, Instructor and Destructor. I will request you to enroll for this course and after completing, please provide your valuable feedback. Thank you. In this lecture, we are going to study Introduction to the C++. Along with that, we are going to see what are the different features of the object-oriented programming language C++, why there is a need of using the object-oriented programming language that is C++, what are the different compilers and which are the applications. Let us begin with the introduction to the C++. In this, we are going to see who invented the C++ language and what was the earlier name of the C++ language. C++ is an object-oriented programming language. It was being developed by Barges Tostrup at AT and T Bell Laboratories in Murray Hill, New Jersey, USA in the early 1980s. C++ is an extension of the C with a major addition of the classes. The idea of the C++, it came from the C increment operator that is plus plus. Thereby, it suggested that C++ is an augmented version of the C. It is also called as the superset of the C. Stroke initially called the new language C with the classes. However, in 1983, the name was changed to C++. What is the need of the object-oriented programming? As there were many flaws in the procedure-oriented programming, so the new approach was developed, that is object-oriented programming. Lots of attempts were made to overcome the flaws of the procedure programming. The major things that was missing in the procedure oriented programming that it emphasizes on the procedure and the functions. While in case of the object oriented programming, the major focus was not on the functions, but it was on the data. The object-oriented programming, it treats the data as the critical element and not the functions. This is the another important aspect that it does not allow the data to flow freely around the system. As in the procedure-oriented programming, the data was being kept global. So any function can access the data, which may cause unintentional changes which allow the bugs to creep. To avoid the restrictions were kept in the object-oriented programming on the data. In object-oriented programming, the data is closely attached to the functions which operate on it. So both of them are considered as one unit. In major cases, they are considered. 
it allows to compose a problem into the number of the entities which are called as objects and then builds the data and the functions around this objects that we create it is necessary to understand the features of the object oriented programming in the c++ what are classes classes are the blueprint for the functional entity which will be defining its properties and the functions then what is the object object are the basic runtime entities in an object oriented systems which has the state and the behavior it is an instance of the class all the members of the class are being accessed through the objects abstraction it refers to the items of representing only the essential features without including the background details so let us understand this with the help of the example whenever we are using any of the application at that time we are only see its front end that is we are only using that application we are performing it what actually it is being used for but we are not knowing what is there at the back end what actually it is being performing which language is being used so that information is being hidden from us encapsulation the wrapping up of the data and the functions into a single unit data encapsulation it is one of the striking features of the class inheritance and in this objects of the one class it is acquiring the properties of the objects of the another class this provides the code reusability polymorphism the ability to take more than one form when one task is performed by the different ways let us consider the example if we want to perform the addition of the two numbers at that time we require the plus operator then what result we get we get the result as the sum but if we use the same operator that is the plus in the string then it will produce a result as concatenation of the two strings the next feature is dynamic binding it means that the code associated with a given procedure call is not known until the time of the call at the runtime message passing object oriented programming it consists of the sets of the objects that can communicate with each other object oriented programming it uses the bottom up approach which are the compilers that c++ uses so here is the list that is microsoft visual c++ eclipse code blocks dev c++ net beans id cy given gcc there are some now online compilers that are too available to compile the program let us see the applications where the c++ language is being used it is being used in the games to develop the gui based applications in the database software and in the operating systems there are many more applications many more applications in this lecture we are going to study the structure of the c++ program understand the structure of the c++ program a sequence of the instructions or the statements are called as the program the statements or the instructions they form the structure of the c++ program the c++ program structure is divided into various sections namely header 
class definition, member function definition, and the main function. The first section that is include. In this, it contains the preprocessor directives to include the various header files. After this, there is a class declaration section. In a class declaration, we are defining the class. It will contain the member variables and the declaration for the member functions. The class member function definition section, it is going to contain the definitions of the various member functions. At the last, there is a main function program which starts the execution of the program and then it is going to create the object of the class. Note that in C++ program, it is providing the flexibility for writing a program with or without the classes and its member function definition. Let us begin with a simple example of a C++ program that prints a string on the screen. I am using a Visual Studio to execute the C++ program. To compile a program, we need to create a project and give the name. Here, I am giving the name as hello world and .cpp, it is an extension which is indicating that we are writing a C++ program. The reader must understand which program we are writing. So, the heading will be given under the comment sections. There are two ways to write the comments. First is single line comment and the second is the Multi-line comments. The comments are being given for the reader. They are not given for the compiler. So for this, we are using the single line comment and then we will write the statement as write a C++ program to display Hello world. The next important part is the preprocessor directive. Thus, we have seen in the lecture structure of the C++. They are generally included at the start of the program. How we are writing it? So, this is the syntax that is hash include. IO string. It contains the standard input and output strings. This header file contains the definition to the objects like C in and C out. The next, we will be writing it as using namespace std. The namespace, it defines the scope for the identifier that are being used in a program. For using the identifier defined in the namespace scope, we must include the using directive. Here, the std in the namespace where C++ standard class libraries are defined using and the namespace are the keywords in the C++. After this, we will be writing the main function. Before writing the main function, the data type is to be defined. The data type that we are going to write is the integer. As we are writing the integer data type, it is going to return some value. What value it is going to return? So, it is going to return the value in the form of 0. Then, now what we have to do, we have to display the hello world onto the console. So, for that, we will be using the C out, then the insertion operator and double inverted commas, 
we will be writing the hello world but before that if we want to insert it onto the new line then we will be writing it with the help of slash n then we will be writing it as slash t why we are using this slash t because we want to give the tab and then we want to display hello world after writing the statement we are going to terminate it with the help of the semicolon if we don't terminate it with the help of the semicolon it is going to throw an error let us build this program here is the output that we are getting let us understand what is this output indicates slash n here we have getting this as the empty line or the new line the onto the new line the output is being displayed then the slash t here the tab is being left then the hello world so after this hello world if i want to insert the new empty line then what we will be writing there is another way to write the slash n that is nothing but the end l with the help of this we will be inserting the new line so hope so you have understood how to display the hello world onto the console this lecture we will be seeing the classes and object in that we are going to see what is a class objects and how to access the data members and the member functions what is a class it is a user defined data type a class is a blueprint for any functional entity which define its properties and its functions it encapsulates the information and behavior about an object a class contains the data members or the attributes a class is an expanded concept of the structure instead of holding only the data it can hold both the data and the functions let us see the syntax of how to declare the class this is the syntax of declaring the class the class definition always begins with the keyword class followed by the class name the class body contains the variables and the functions they are called as the class member the variables declared inside the class are called as the data members and functions are called as the member functions a access specifier is a keyword in object oriented programming language which sets the accessibility of the classes methods and other members access specifiers are grouped under the section private public or the protected they are mainly used to denote which members are private or the public and here we are going to terminate the class with the help of the semicolon let us see the example of how to declare the class here is a example the class keyword followed by the class name student this will now become a type identifier that can be used to declare the instance of the class the class contains the two data members and the member functions remember that data members are private by default while the member functions are public by default the function get data is used to assign the values to the member variables and 
the void show is, is used to display the values. And then we are going to terminate the class with the help of this semicolon. Objects. Now we have created the class. Once it is declared, we need to create the variable of the type. An object is an instance of a class. Objects are the basic runtime entities in an object oriented system which has the state and the behavior. All the members of the class are accessed through the objects. Let us see the syntax. Class, class name and the variable name. Accessing the data members and the member functions. You can access the data members and the member functions by using the dot operator. If the data member is declared as the public. Let us see the syntax. Here is the syntax which is showing that object name. Then we are going to use the dot operator over here followed by the function name. In the rounded brackets, we are going to pass the actual parameters. Let us see the example. Here is the example that is the student dot put data. This will display the values of the data members. A member function can only be invoked by the object of the same class. The data members can be accessed as student dot age is equal to 25. We have to take a note that private data of a class can be accessed only through the member functions of a class. In this lecture, we are going to see the access specifier. What are the different types of the access specifiers and how to use the data members which are being declared with the different access specifiers with the help of the examples. In this lecture, we will be studying the access specifier for the C++ classes with the help of the example. As in the last lecture of classes and object, we have seen access specifiers are being used before the declaration of the data members and the member functions. Why this access specifiers are being used? Because they are used to enforce the restriction to the members of the class. There are three types of the access specifier. The first is private, second public and last is the protected. Let us see one by one in detail. The first access specifier that we are going to see is the private. It makes any member accessible only to the member functions of the class. This is restricting to use of the class members within the class. It may be applied to the data member and the member functions. The data members are normally declared as the private. This encourages the information hiding. Let us write a C++ program to demonstrate the private access modifier. In this, we will first try to access the private data member directly with the help of the dot operator and check what output we are getting. First, we need to declare the preprocessor directive that is hash include iostream then using name space std class class name student dot 
within this the first data member that i am going to declare it as a private int roll number then member function void put data this function is going to display the roll number see out slash in roll number variable name roll number and l now write the main functions int main within this create the object first of the class student that is student student see out statement to ask the user to enter the roll number see in here i am trying to access the private data member roll number with the help of the dot operator stud dot roll number then invoke the put data function with the help of dot operator stud dot put data finally return some value that is zero build the program and see what is the output there were build errors would you like to continue and run the last successful build we will say no and see what is the error here the error it is showing that it cannot access the private member declared in the class student now to access the private data member what changes we have to perform in this program let us do the modification over here i will in the put data function i will indirectly manipulate this roll number through the public function since this function it is being initialized to roll number with the value of the argument that will be passed in the put data function as int r then the value that is being there in the variable r it will be assigned to the roll number in the main i will be declaring one variable which will be indirectly accessing the roll number for that i will change over here also your roll and as the parameter is being passed in the put data function we need to write it over here when invoking the function 2 for that i will write over here as the roll let us build the program and see whether now we are getting the output as there are now no errors the program is being built successfully and it is now asking us to enter the roll number here i am now going to enter the roll number as 5 and it is being displayed correctly so this is how we are going to access the private data members indirectly with the help of the public function the next access specifier that we are going to see is the public 
The public members may be accessed by the member functions of the same class and the functions outside the scope of the class. Which means that the public members are accessible from any part of the program. The member functions are normally declared as the public, which means if we forgot to declare the access specifier for the member functions at that time, the member functions will be considered by default as the public. Now, write a program to demonstrate the public access modifier. We already know that the data members or the member functions that are being declared as public, we are directly able to access it with the help of the dot operator. Let us see its demonstration first. Hash include iostream. This is the preprocessor directive or it is also called as the header file. Then we will be writing using name space std class its class name within this first write the access specifier then the data member int role number member function as put data in this function i will be writing the cout statement to display the roll number and in the main function we need to create the object of the class student object name as stud see out statement to ask the user to enter the roll number here i will be accessing the data member roll number directly with the help of the dot operator stood dot roll number now invoke the put data function with the help of dot operator stood dot put data finally written zero let us build the program and see the output here it is asking us to enter the roll number i have entered the roll number as it the value it is being displayed over here as 8 roll number 8 to access the roll number that is being declared as public we have used the dot operator directly and the last access specifier is the protected this protected access specifier is between the private and the public access if the member function is being declared in a class as protected at that time they cannot be accessed from outside the class but if we want to access it it can be accessed from the derived class so in this case the member of the base class can be used only within the derived class as the protected members except for the private members in the last lecture we have seen how to create the object in this lecture 
we will be studying how to create the array of the object array of the object an object of the class it represents the single record in the memory what happens if we want to have more than one record of a class type at that time we have to create the array of the objects as an array it can be of any data type we can also have the array of the variables that are of the type class such variables are called as the array of objects let us see the example here the class is being created for the student within the class body i have declared one data member as the student name it is being declared with the help of the data type that is the character next data type is the roll number which is of the integer data type then the access specifier public and the member function get data and the put data then we are going to close the class with the help of the semicolon what happens if we need 80 students data then at that time we are not declaring the different objects that is student 1 student 2 student 3 up to student 80 why because it will become very difficult task to handle for this we need to use the array of the objects write a c++ program to accept the student's data and display it for that we need to first write the header file that is hash include io stream using namespace std declare a class class keyword followed by the class name the class name it is student within this we are going to declare the data members and the member functions with the help of access specifier the data members that i am going to declare in this program are private we will be accepting the students information such as roll number and name roll number it will be in the form of the integer format for that we will be using the data type as the int followed by the variable name that is roll number and for the name we will be using the data type that is the string and the variable name as the name after declaring the data members we need to declare the member functions the member function that i am going to write is the void get data in this the first message that will be displayed onto the console is see out then the insertion operator in the double inverted comma slash in slash in it indicates that it is going to go to the new line and it will be displaying the message enter the roll number after that we need to accept the input for that we will be using the c in then the extraction operator and the variable name similarly for the name we are going to write enter the name c in name after accepting the student information we need to display it for that the function we will write it as the void put data into this we will be using the see out statement roll number the variable name and the end else 
this end L it will be acting similar to that of the flash end. Now what we have done, we have created the class. We need to now write the main function. The main function, we are going to write it with the help of the data type that is the integer. In the main function, we are now going to create the array of object. For that, we need to write first the class name and the object name. The object name I have given over here is as the stood and the array size we have to specify. The array size that I have given over here is as the 2. As we are using the array of the object concept for that we will be using the for loop. With the help of this for loop we will be able to accept the multiple students data. In this for loop, it will be divided it into the three parts, which are they? First, we need to initialize the array. The initialization is being done first to zero. Next, we need to specify for how many times this loop it is going to iterate. As the maximum size is being given as two, so over here, I will be writing i is less than two which indicates that this loop it is going to iterate it for the two times. How it will iterate for that I will be using this I++ operator. Within this for loop the first statement that I am going to write it in the double inverted comma that is detail of student. After this I will be writing I plus 1. Why I have written over here as the i plus 1 because i value it is being initialized to 0. We don't want to display detail of the student 0. We need to display detail of the student 1. For that I have added plus 1 to i. After the statement we need to invoke the gate data function. For that we will be writing it like this. Then dot operator and the function name that is gate data. What it is going to do first it will accept the first information of the student then it is going to iterate it for one more time to accept the second information of the student. As we have accepted the two students information, we need to display that two students information. Again, we will be writing the for loop int i is equal to 0, i is less than 2, i plus plus. Within this, the cout statement student. i plus 1 and end l. Then it is going to invoke the put data function. Then it is going to return the value in the form of the 0. Let us build the program and see what output we are getting. As there were no errors in the program, the program is being built successfully and it is being showing us onto the console to enter the student information that is detail of the student 1. Then we are going to enter the roll number of the first student, then the name as the Rashi. Then it is asking us to enter the 
second information of the student. So the roll number as five, then the name as Ramesh. See, as we have accepted the two students' information over here, that two student information are being displayed. This is how we will be using the array of the object concept to accept the multiple data. In this lecture, we are going to see the friend function. Why do we need a friend function? In the access specifier, we have seen that we are not directly able to access the private and the protected data members. To access that, we need to use the friend function. Is a friend function. A friend function in a class can access the protected and private class members. That is, it can access the private data members and the member functions. To use the friend function in a class, what we have to do? We have to mention the keyword friend before the function name. For accessing the data, the declaration of the friend function should be made inside the body of the class starting with the keyword friend. Let us see the syntax. Let us understand the syntax of declaring the friend function. Here what we have done, we have created the class with the class name. Within this, we need to declare the friend function. For that, the syntax is like this. First, we need to write the keyword friend. Then the written type, then the function name and the arguments. What arguments we are going to specify over here? So it will be the object of the class. The definition of the friend function will be written outside the class. For that, there is no need to declare the friend keyword again. Directly, we will be mentioning the written type, function name and the arguments. Within this, we will be able to access the private and the protected data because it is a friend function of a class name. Now, the question may arise, how we will be invoking this friend function? So, it can be invoked like the normal functions without the help of any object. Write a C++ program to accept the student data and display it using the friend function. Let us understand this concept by writing a program and what output we will be getting. That is, we will be writing first the header file. That is, hash include IO string. Next, we need to write using namespace. STD. Here we need to declare a class now. So the class, the class name that I am going to give it as a student. Within this, we will be declaring the data members as a private. The first variable is int roll number. The next is string name. Then I will be declaring the member function. First member function is void get data. With this function, we will be able to enter the student data. That is with the help of seen and the see out statement. Enter. the roll number c in roll number c out slash in enter the name c in the name Next, here I will be using the friend function to display the data. What is the syntax? Let 
let us check it first friend as a keyword then the data type that is void the function name that i am going to give is the put data within this i will be passing the arguments what type of argument it, here we will be creating the argument as the object so student is the class name and the object name is else in the class we have only declared the friend function the definition i am going to write it outside the class how we will be writing it for that we will write void put data then the object student s within this i will be writing the see out statement which will be displaying the data that is rule number we need to now access the private data members for that we will be accessing it with the help of the object s dot rule number the next see out statement is to display the name then over here is dot name after this we will be writing the main function within this main function we will now create the object student the object name that i am going to give is the stud with the help of this object i will be now invoking the get data function with help of this statement the get data function will be invoked now the next thing how we will be invoking this put data function for that i have already told you we are not going to need the object for that we will be directly invoking it as the normal function we will write it as put data over here we will pass the object finally it is going to return some value in the form of the zero this is how the friend function is declared in a program let us build the program and see what output we are getting after compilation it is being asking the user to enter the roll number here i will enter the roll number as 10 then the name the name i am going to enter it as the ramesh see the output the values that we have entered it is being displayed this is how we are able to access the private data members or the private member functions with the help of the friend function in this lecture we are going to see what is a constructor different types of the constructor and at the end we are going to execute the program which will be containing the different types of the constructor what is a constructor it is a special member function which can initialize the object of the class it is special because it is having the same name as the class and no return type not the void also member variables can be initialized by the constructor or they can be set afterwards the constructor get invokes when the object of the class is being created let us see the example of the constructor here what we have done we have created the class student within this the two data members that are being declared as the private then in a public what we are going to do we are going to define the constructor here 
we can see that the constructor is having the same name as the class. As already we have seen it on to the last slide that the constructor is not having the written type, not even the void type. Types of the constructor. There are three types of the constructor, which are they default constructor, parameterized constructor, and lastly, the copy constructor. Let us see one by one constructor in detail. That we are going to see is the default constructor. As the name indicates that it is a default, the default constructor is not going to have any arguments. It is used to initialize an object of the class with the legal initial values, which can be initialized to zero also. Here is the example of the default constructor. What we have done, we have created the class student, then the data members, which are been declared as the private. In the public, the constructor is being declared to that the initial values, the data members were here, they are being initialized to zeros. So this is being called as the default constructor. Parameterized constructor. As the word indicates that parameterize, it is going to accept the arguments. It is going to initialize the data members of the object with the arguments that are being passed to it. Here is the example of the parameterized constructor. The data members are being declared under the private and the constructor is being created. Which type of the constructor? That is the parameterized constructor and three different parameters are being passed. Here, the variable r, it is going to assign the value to the data member roll number. Next, the string n. This n variable, it is going to assign the value to the name and m it is going to assign the value to the marks. The last constructor that we are going to see is a copy constructor. The copy constructor is going to take an object as an argument and the values they are going to copy from one data member of one object it into the another object. The reference variable, it is being used as an argument to the copy constructor. Here is the example where we can see how to use the copy constructor. What we have done, we have created the copy constructor. Then within the copy constructor, the syntax that is being written that is the class name, the reference variable is being given and the object is being created. With the help of this object, the data is being copied it into the roll number. Write a C++ program using the constructor to display the student data. In this, we are going to use the three constructors that is default, parameterized and the copy constructor. Let's start writing with the program. For that we will be requiring the preprocessor directive that is IO stream. Then using namespace std class 
class name within this we will be declaring the data members as private integer roll number string name and the float marks the next we are going to declare the constructor the constructor are always declared as in the public the first constructor that i am going to declare it as the default constructor the constructor is having the same name as the class what is the class name it is having the class name as student over here we are writing the default constructor name also as the student to understand we will be writing it over here with the help of the comment as default constructor within the default constructor we are now going to initialize the values to zero roll number as 3 and sorry roll number as 0 and marks is equal to it is in the integer format so we will be writing it as 0.0 next what we are going to do we are going to declare the parameterized constructor student then the arguments we need to pass over here how many arguments we will be requiring we will be requiring the three arguments the first argument is the int r then the string n and float m which type of constructor it is it is parameterized constructor within this what we are going to do the arguments that are being passed over here the values will be assigned to the data members that are being declared under this it will be roll number is equal to r name is equal to n marks is equal to m the next constructor we need to define it is the copy constructor how we will be writing it for that it will be student within the rounded bracket we will be writing it as student then the reference variable and the object we are going to create which type of constructor it is it is a copy constructor then what we are going to do we are going to write it like this that is roll number is equal to as dot that is object dot the variable that is roll number next the name is equal to as dot name next marks is equal to as dot marks this is how the copy constructor is being written now the next that is the data is being how the data is to be written that is part we have written now how to display the data for that we have to write it like this within this we will be writing the see out statement roll number then the variable name and end l the next see out statement is for name and l next see out statement is for marks
After this, we need to declare the main function. Int main. In this, we will be creating the objects. The first object that I am going to create is for invoking the cop the default constructor. Next is for the parameterized constructor. Here the parameter that I am going to pass as one, then the name and the marks. Then the next is for the home, it is for the copy constructor over here. What parameter will be passed? We are going to pass the object that is being created earlier, whose data we want to copy. We want to copy the data from the object to two. Over here, now we will be accessing or invoking the display function. To two dot display stood three dot display and finally it is going to return the value in the form of the zero. Let us build the program and see what output we are getting. As there were no errors written to the program, the program is being built successfully. Over here, the first output that we are seeing it as roll number is equal to 0 and mass is equal to 0. Why? Because over here, we have been initialized that values to 0. The next, over here, the second values that we are seeing it as roll number one name as Ramesh and marks is equal to 80.5. Why? Because this data is being given with the help of the parameterized constructor. And the third values that we are getting because of the copy constructor. This is how the constructors are being used within the program. In the last lecture, we have seen what is a constructor, what are the different types of the constructor. Now, we need to see the destructor. Destructor. It is a member function of a class. The name is tilde. It is being followed by the class name. Why we are using this destructor? Because we need to destroy the objects that have been created by the constructor. That's why we use the destructor within a program. It receives no parameters and it is not going to return any value. This is the important thing that we have to remember while mentioning the destructor within the program that there is only one destructor per class no overloading is being allowed in the last lecture what we have done we have created the constructors the same program we are going to consider and we are going to destroy the constructors one by one. For that, what we have to mention it within the program, first thing that we have to use the tail operator, then the class name within the curly bracket, the cout statement that I am going to write it as destructor. And L. To understand, we will write it over here as destructor. 
let us build the program and see what is the output this is the output that we are getting how many constructors we have created we have created this three constructor default parameterize and the copy constructor now we need to destroy that three constructor so over here it is being displaying the statement for the three times next you might get a thought that why we have written only one destructor over here because in a program there will be only one destructor that we have to mention so thank you